This is section 85 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Dr. Mark Twain, Farmiopath by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at the annual dinner of the New York Postgraduate Medical School and Hospital, January 21, 1909. The President, Dr. George N. Miller, in introducing Mr. Clemens, referred to his late experience with burglars. Gentlemen and doctors, I am glad to be among my own kind tonight. I was once a sharpshooter, but now I practice a much higher and equally as deadly a profession. It wasn't so very long ago that I became a member of your cult, and for the time I've been in the business, my record is one that can't be scoffed at. As to the burglars, I am perfectly familiar with these people. I have always had a good deal to do with burglars. Not officially, but through their attentions to me. I never suffered anything at the hands of a burglar. They have invaded my house time and time again. They never got anything. Then those people who burglarized our house in September, we got back the plated ware they took off, we jailed them, and I have been sorry ever since. They did us a great service. They scared off all the servants in the place. I consider the Children's Theater, of which I am president, and the Postgraduate Medical School, as the two greatest institutions in the country. This school, in bringing its 20,000 physicians from all parts of the country, bringing them up to date, and sending them back with renewed confidence, has surely saved hundreds of thousands of lives which otherwise would have been lost. I have been practicing now for seven months. When I settled on my farm in Connecticut in June, I found the community very thinly settled, and since I have been engaged in practice it has become more thinly settled still. This gratifies me, as indicating that I am making an impression on my community. I suppose it is the same with all of you. I have always felt that I ought to do something for you, and so I organized a Redding, Connecticut, branch of the postgraduate school. I am only a country farmer up there, but I am doing the best I can. Of course, the practice of medicine and surgery in a remote country district has its disadvantages, but in my case I am happy in a division of responsibility. I practice in conjunction with a horse doctor, a sexton, and an undertaker. The combination is airtight, and once a man is stricken in our district, escape is impossible for him. These four of us, three in the regular profession and the fourth an undertaker, are all good men. There is Bill Ferguson, the Redding undertaker, Bill is there in every respect. He is a little lukewarm on general practice and writes his name with a rubber stamp. Like my old southern friend, he is one of the finest planters anywhere. Then there is Jim Ruggles, the horse doctor. Ruggles is one of the best men I have got. He also is not much on general medicine, but he is a fine horse doctor. Ferguson doesn't make any money off him. You see, the combination started this way. When I got up to Reading and had become a doctor, I looked around to see what my chances were for aiding in the great work. The first thing I did was to determine what manner of doctor I was to be. Being a Connecticut farmer, I naturally consulted my pharmacopoeia, and at once decided to become a farmiopath. Then I got circulating about and got in touch with Ferguson and Ruggles. Ferguson joined readily in my ideas, 
but ruggles kept saying that while it was all right for an undertaker to get aboard he couldn't see where it helped horses well we started to find out what was the trouble with the community and it didn't take long to find out that there was just one disease and that was race suicide and driving about the countryside i was told by my fellow farmers that it was the only rational human and valuable disease but it is cutting into our profits so that we'll either have to stop it or we'll have to move we've had some funny experiences up there in redding not long ago a fellow came along with a rolling gait and a distressed face we asked him what was the matter we always hold consultations on every case as there isn't business enough for four he said he didn't know but that he was a sailor and perhaps that might help us to give a diagnosis we treated him for that and i never saw a man die more peacefully that same afternoon my dog tige treed an african gentleman we chained up the dog and then the gentleman came down and said he had appendicitis we asked him if he wanted to be cut open and he said yes that he'd like to know if there was anything in it so we cut him open and found nothing in him but darkness so we diagnosed his case as infidelity because he was dark inside teague is a very clever dog and aids us greatly the other day a patient came to me and inquired if i was old dr clemens as a practitioner i have given a great deal of my attention to bright's disease i have made some rules for treating it that may be valuable listen rule one when approaching the bedside of one whom an all-wise president i mean an all-wise providence well anyway it's the same thing has seen fit to afflict with disease well the rule is simple even if it is old-fashioned rule two i've forgotten just what it is but uh, rule three this is always indispensable bleed your patient end of dr mark twain farmyopath by mark twain read by john greenman